Hi, today I want to talk to you about handling the map during the race. If this is your first time on this channel, this is Into the Forest I Go, where we're talking about orienteering, the sport where you run with the map and compass, and already on the channel you will find lots of information regarding this topic and also lots of chats with different people, so feel free to browse around and find whatever you like. Now, um, before I begin the topic about the map, I want to say a few things um, regarding the, the ha handling of the map in general. First of all, actually an, an, an interesting fact is that this topic has been requested by one of the people supporting us on Patreon. And I thought it's a very interesting topic to actually cover as one of the videos for the channel. Maybe it's not a very broad topic, but still, it might be interesting how other people are doing it. So I'll let you know. Um, also, uh, if you want to support the channel financially in any way, then there is a Patreon and you can become a patron. Uh, the link is in the description. You can actually nowadays also um, become a, I don't know, a, a member or some, I don't know what it's called, but uh, uh, there is a similar function basically on YouTube itself, so there is probably a button somewhere around this video uh, to do it as well. Another thing that I want to mention is that uh, we have the YouTube channel over here, but there is also a podcast, so if you prefer to consume these especially longer chats when I'm talking with people and listen to them as a podcast, they are available on Spotify. And again, the link is in the description. Um, last thing I want to mention, Last weekend I've been to Central European Youth Orienteering Champs and uh, we had a lot of fun running in interesting terrains, I think. I think also that the competition itself was very cool and very important for all, the, all of those young runners from the countries that came and competed. I think that the level of the competition was very high and a lot of very strong one runners were there, which is exactly why many years ago, well, not so many actually, but some years ago, we decided that we want to have a competition like that so that the youth actually has an opportunity to um, compete against one another and see where they are after the winter season uh, in, and, and what are their realistic chances of fighting for certain positions that they are hoping for. So I think that in general, this uh, competition did what it was supposed to do. So that makes me really happy. Of course, it makes me also happy that the Polish team came out uh, quite well on this competition. I think that uh, we got more medal places than I actually expected, which is awesome. And as always, unfortunately, we are still showing that we are stronger on those, on those sprint distances than forest distances. This has always been our bane and I'm, you know, really trying hard and, and pushing hard to fix this and make the people, make, make the, our youth better in running not only on the hard surface, but also through the forest, through those difficult maps. So that's definitely a challenge. Um, I also really enjoyed that some people came and said hi and um, wanted to, to take a photo and chat a little bit about the channel. That's really awesome. Don't be shy uh, about doing this. I, it always makes me happy and I, I, I'm always very grateful to see people that enjoy the work that I'm doing over here because it also gives me a purpose, so to say. All right, now back to the map. So I think that this was fated to happen, you know, me talking about this topic, because actually before I got a request to say something about it, to record a video about it, I was actually thinking about it on Saturday, I want to say. Yes, it was on Saturday. On Saturday after the long distance race. So we had relays on Friday. On Saturday, we had a long distance. The long distance was awesome, by the way. You should definitely check it out. I think the course setter did a, an amazing job and courses were wonderful. And the long legs were really tricky. And uh, they, 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 they definitely posed a challenge when it came to picking the right route choices. But I'm actually going to show you what I did when I was going to my second control. So the first control was quite easy. Uh, I'm basically navigating through some bushes, finding the control quite easily. And then the 
long leg, I immediately see that I want to go from the right side. I want to attack it from the right side, not from the left side. But the challenge is going out of the green. And as you can see, I am not doing it very well. I'm actually trying to find the path, but I don't spot the entrance to the path. And in the end, I decide to go to the top of the hill, go next to the tower, and then follow the roads. And everything is going quite well. Um, maybe I should cross here instead of going along the road so much, but that's def definitely not the big problem on this leg. The problem is though, that while I was going to number two, suddenly I thought that instead of number two, I'm going to number nine. Of course, I didn't see number nine, I just saw the leg which was, which was parallel, and I kind of switched from left leg to the right leg, and I, in my head, I started to navigate straight to control number nine instead of control number two. And I got pretty far, I got pretty far. So only here when I was already at the top of the hill, I realized while checking the control description that I'm uh, the, the control description doesn't say rock, doesn't say stone, it says uh, a thickening. And I can see definitely a stone or a rock on the map. So that made my uh, red light bulb to, to shine and suddenly I realized, oh crap, I'm going to the wrong control. So I, you can see that I am immediately, immediately correcting the direction, but the damage is done. I already went too far, so some time has already been lost over here. And this, this was one of the two mistakes I did on, on this course. The other one was actually connected with the wrong interpretation of the map. I was, I'm, I'm quite sure that at, at some part of the climb that I did to, to one of the controls, there was a very visible flattening, which was not visible on the map, and it confused me a lot. Uh, anyway, that's that's not important. What is important is, is that after the race, I was wondering, okay, so what went wrong? What went wrong on the second control? Why did I switch from number two to number nine? What should have I done to avoid this? And I came to two conclusions, which you know I'm, I'm trying to do, but in this case, it just simply failed. So the first one, is if I would have folded the map properly, I probably wouldn't be tempted even to go to number nine. And the second is that if I would be following my thumb properly, which is, we call it thumbing the map as you go, then it would also give me a chance to avoid making this mistake. So this is what I want to talk to you about, about those two things, folding the maps and, and thumbing the map while going uh, along the leg. So let's talk about the first part, folding the map. So this is the map from this, this race. Uh, again, a very cool course and a very cool map as well. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but it has been folded in several different places. I mean, along this line, I can see at least three different folds. And along this line, I can see one, two, three, four different folds. So I definitely have been working with the map and, and folding it in several different ways. But what I didn't do is that when I was going to control number two, so from, from here to here, I didn't cover this part of the map. Therefore, somewhere along the way, I got tempted by this line instead of this line. So this is where I made a switch. So what I should have done probably is to fold the map somehow like this, which doesn't seem very, somehow like this, right? So it doesn't seem very, very good because, you know, it doesn't have nice edges, but that would actually keep my whole line from control number one at the bottom to control number two at the top on the map. And also because I'm holding the map with my right hand, I would be covering actually the, the part of the leg to number nine, which is on the edge of the map over here. So that would give me a pretty good chance of avoiding making the mistake that I did. And in general, I think that when you're thinking about navigating the course and folding the map, uh, you should always try to keep the map as small as possible so that it's, it's actually easy to thumb your course. So what does it mean to thumb the course? Well, when I say thumb the course, I mean that I'm following a part of a part of the course, and as I go, I'm moving my thumb over here to be right next to the features that I'm in the terrain next to, right? So I hope it makes sense. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm a, a, approaching this juncture, juncture over here, I will keep my thumb over here. So that whenever I'm running and looking around and then I want to control the map, 
I know that the place where I have to focus my eyes on is right next to my thumb. That's the idea, basically. So then you're moving the thumb to the next feature, you're moving your thumb to the next feature, and again, you can go, 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 and look at the map and you immediately know where to focus your gaze on. So this is what thumbing does. And you can very clearly see that if I have the map unfolded like this, and I have to reach the line between one and two over here, it's hard for me because my thumb doesn't reach that far, right? So that's why I, tr I try to avoid of having too much edge on the right side because this is where uh, my, my hand is usually and, and how I'm holding the map. Um, and, but if you're holding the map in the left hand, you will be doing the same. You will be doing the same from the left side, right? So you want you don't want this this edge to be on the left side. So that's basically it. And I also noticed that you know I have this thing from the old days when the the the, the quality of of maps was a lot worse. And we um, by, by folding the map too many times, you were actually risking to damage the map and you know some part of the map would uh, be unreadable invisible and that happened several times so i think i still have this from the old days when i when i try to avoid folding the map too many times especially along uh, the same edges but i think it's wrong i think it's wrong because nowadays the maps are printed very very well and the quality is good and i don't think you should be worried about that so all in all um, fold the map as uh, as neatly as you can, of course. Keep the controls that you're going to on the map, definitely. Keep the next control that you will be going to on the map so that you can plan ahead, definitely. Um, and also remember that if there is a long lag that is coming and you know that it's coming, sometimes you will need to unfold the map during the race, take a look at it while running, and then fold it back again, right? So that's unfortunately how it is, but you know, it doesn't take a long, a long time to fold the map. And as long as you can do it uh, while running, it's all good. Um, another thing that I'm doing while I'm folding the map is I'm, I'm usually folding it and, and really going like this so that it, it doesn't unfold by itself. So I'm trying to uh, like press the edge of the fold kind of. And uh, I, I think it helps, especially with the stiff paper like this one. Uh, a very good quality, awesome quality of the map of the paper, uh, but it is a little bit stiff. So sometimes you need to give it like an additional help so that it stays folded just, just as you want it, right? So folding the map and thumbing. I don't think I have to talk about thumbing a lot, a lot more. It's basically very simple, but also very effective. So basically, as I said before, you just follow the thumb with the thumb uh, your path along the leg. So it, it doesn't have to be in a straight line, of course, depends on, on your route choice and where you're going, but that's essentially what you need to do. And it helps you focus quicker on, on the map. Um, actually, one of the runners during the sprint distance told me that he had troubles, whenever he wanted to look on, on the map, he had troubles finding where he's currently at. And that's exactly where thumbing comes uh, and, and helps you because you always look for your position somewhere close to your thumb and that's the idea behind it. So hopefully these two things will help you figure out how to control your map during the race a little bit better and also will help you save some time while uh, trying to find your position on the map. But most importantly, hopefully it will help you avoid those annoying, really annoying mistakes where you feel like you're in control, like I was. I, I knew ev all the time where I am and where I'm going, but unfortunately I was going to the wrong control. So that's super annoying. You feel like you're, you're in control and everything is going fine and suddenly you realize, oh crap, I'm going not along the right line on the map and that sucks, that sucks. So uh, I personally hate these, these mistakes because um, I feel like it's not a real mistake. I, I I feel like it's like an accident. You know, it's 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 it feels like it's not my fault, but in reality, of course it is. Of course it is. Anyway, if this has been helpful, consider giving this video a like. Consider giving it a comment for the algorithm for other people to uh, have it easier finding these materials. But also, I'm really curious about how you are handling the map and how 
does it help in your navigation? Are you doing the thumbing? It's also interesting because I don't think a lot of people are actually using it very actively. Uh, and I think it's a quite a powerful technique. Of course, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.